Hello everyone, I'm Le He from Tsinghua University. One of the authors of paper improved primary attacks on forerun Kachak 224-256. This paper has been published in TOSC Volume 2021, Issue 1. On behalf of other authors, in this video I will give an about 20 minutes presentation to explain our work in this paper. As the title indicates, the analysis object of this paper is forerun the low capacity Kachak and the attack type is limited to pre-image attack. Moreover, we focus on linear analysis, which is commonly used in pre-image fields. We improve the linear analysis by a technology named Freedom Reuse Strategy, which will be mainly discussed in this video. This strategy works for partial linearization part, and it can be directly applied in any full linear structure. Then we choose the currently best linear structure for low capacity chuck proposed in LS19. As a result, we reduce the attack complexity by factors of 2 to the power of 15 and 2 to the power of 21. An important note is the complexity here and even in the whole video refer to guess times instead of catch up running. We just neglect the cost of solving the linear restriction system in total counting. This page briefly summarizes some related work in pre-image fields of run reduced catch up. Firstly, in MS13, the authors provide pre-image attacks with SAT solver. This kind of attack can outperform exotic search in Kachuk reduced to three runs. Then the authors further applied rotational creep analysis in MPS13. This kind of attack even works in forerun high capacity Kachuk. As far as we know, this is the only work that provides pre-image creep analysis on forerun Kachuk 512, since linear analysis can hardly deal with it. In GLS16, a two-run full linear structure of Kachuk run function is proposed. This structure can be directly applied in 3-run Kachak, while attacks for 4-run Kachak still requires another process of partial linearization. In LS19, the authors developed the linear structure via an allocating model. This model works extremely well in 3-run Kachak and even helps in providing the first practical pre-image for 3-run Kachak 224. However, their partial linearization strategy for 4-run Kachak is still inefficient. Our work directly enhanced this developed model and just made efforts in partial linearization. The complexities of pre-image attacks on 400 Kachak 224-256 are summarized in this table. From the comparison, we can see that for 400 Kachak, an efficient partial linearization strategy can even bring more gains than a developed linear structure. So, partial linearization is indeed a major problem. Before getting into the main part, we first learn some preliminaries of Kachak about calculating, output, and some important notation. As we all know, Kachak was the winner of Sha Tzu competition and finally standardized in 2015. The designers adopted a new proposed iterative construction named Sponge. In this video, we will now present the execution of general Sponge. For more details, please refer to the Kachak reference. We only focused on a certain case that its iterative core, Kachak permutation, is executed only twice as shown in the figure below. This is exactly the attack model we use in this paper. As for the Kachak permutation, it runs on a 1600-bit inner state. The inner state can be organized as a 5 times 5 times 64 cuboid, and each bit is indexed by a triple x, y, z, where x and y vary from 0 to 4, and z varies from 0 to 63. According to the Kachak reference, the cuboid can be cut into different parts named rows, columns, lengths or slices under certain x or y or z, as shown in the figure. Then each execution of Kachak f consists of 24 rounds of round function r, and each r includes 5 steps, theta, rho, pi, chi, iota. We understand not all listeners are familiar with the Kachak function, so we fade the concrete formulas out and try to highlight the properties of those steps. Well, theta is a diffusion layer by the sum operation among 11 bits, Rho is an inland rotation permutation, pi is an in-slice swap permutation, chi is a 5-bit quadratic x-box, which is the only nonlinear step in Kachak f, and iota is a constant sum layer which can be ignored in linear analysis. After finishing all Kachak f executions, the digest is output from the first L bits of the final state. The counting order is z, x, and finally y. The directions are given in the figure. We set this page here just to emphasize that, in Kachak 224, digest from the fourth length correspond to z from 0 to 31. The last part of preliminaries is quite important because it involves the meanings of those notations we used in this paper. 
Without learning these notations, those construction figures of linear structure or freedom rule strategy might be hard to understand. First, we need to mark the execution status of a middle state. We use a capital Greece letter with the superscript to denote the state exactly after the corresponding step. Here, alpha is the mount theta, rho, pi, chi, iota, and i starts from 1. We pronounce it alpha i, for example, pi third, which means the state after the third pi step is the last linear state in the linear structure. In particular, iota zeros denotes the initial state after absorbing the message block. Then we can further denote one bit from a certain state with a triple index in the subscript. We pronounce it alpha i x y z. For example, chi force 000 to chi force 4031 correspond to the output of 41 kachak 224. Here we inverse the last iota step before searching the pre-image. We may also use star symbol to denote a part of a certain state. The star symbol here means all legal values. For example, pi third star yz is a 5-bit row, pi third x star z is a 5-bit colon, pi third xy star is a 64-bit length, and pi third star star z is a 5 times 5 slice. Column sum is a significant value in theta steps. We use symbol s to denote the column sum so that we can simplify some calculating formulas. This symbol is marked by a certain state with xz, which denotes the sum of corresponding 5-bit columns. Now we can start our improved linear analysis of Kachak. First of all, we should explain how linear analysis works in Kachak run function. It is self-evident that the core of linear analysis is to construct linear relations between input bits and output bits. Suppose we have input m, output o, and we may need some link variables l to connect input and output. We set some conditions in m to linearize parts of l, and then set conditions in l to linearize part of o. There is also another way where we start from L, linearizing forwards and backwards. Here we only focus on the direct linearization. As long as we linearize any bit in O, we successfully construct a linear root from the encryption function. Then we can satisfy some conditions in linearized output bits, and each condition brings a gain of 2 to the power of 1. All these conditions above compose a linear equation system, which corresponds to a 0-1 matrix. Actually, the linear equation system may have no solution or multiple solutions. Here we remind again that we neglect the cost of solving it. We are only concerned with the number of solutions in total for matching the entire output. For the analysis object of a chart, things become a bit different. In linear analysis of a chart, I mean present linear analysis, L becomes a full linear state, and O becomes the output of last pi step. In other words, we construct a loosened root since L is not partially chosen and O is not digest. Under this analysis, from M to L, we need to design a linear structure, and from L to O, we need to perform a partial linearization. We the better reduce those equations in M and L so that we can set more equations in O because the total number of equations is limited by the length of M. Moreover, since the linear root doesn't pass through the last quadratic X box, one equation in O may not bring a gain of 2 to the power of 1. After constructing the linear root, gain analysis will be further required. Therefore, the improved linear analysis of a chart consists of three parts, linear structure, partial linearization, and gain analysis. First about linear structure, we have stated that we inherit this part from LS19, where a two-run linear structure with 194 degrees of freedom left is designed via an allocating model. In this video, we just simply introduced the principle of this structure. For more details, please refer to the original paper. To construct a linear structure, we must let the linear root pass through chi, which is the only nonlinear step in Kachak F. It is easily known that chi keeps linear when the input doesn't contain neighboring variables. For example, if only 0yz and 2yz are variables, all 5 bit outputs can keep linear. Under this law, the linear root can easily pass through the first chi step. Then we must deal with linear generation to avoid neighboring variables appearing in the next chi. We need to choose proper constants to prevent generation in chi, and fix column sum to prevent diffusion in theta. As for rho and pi, these two are B2B permutations and will not generate new variables. This figure shows the two-round linear structure for Kachak 256. The structure for Kachak 224 is just similar. Here each square represents a 64-bit length. The initial state contains 10 variable lengths, leaving 15 constant lengths. Among those constant lengths, 8 lengths are restricted because they are out of the range of message block, as marked by diagonals. 
The linear structure starts with 320 column sum equations to prevent diffusion in the first theta step. Here RC is short for random count, which supports a random space for searching the pre-image. The constants of the first chi step are all fixed by the form of variable 0, variable 0, 1, so that the first chi step will not generate new variables. Similarly, in the second theta step, 128 equations are set to prevent diffusion. Finally, the linear route passes through the second chi step and reaches pi third. It can be proven that the rank of equation matrix is only 446, returning two degrees of freedom. Thus, this two round structure leaves 194 degrees of freedom. Actually, to meet those constants of 0 and 1 in the first chi step, the length in the initial state must satisfy specific conditions. However, some conditions only involve restricted parts and cannot be satisfied by setting the message. For this reason, an allocating model is applied to generate a qualified inner state. It should be noted that the complexity of matching such conditions is much smaller than searching the pre-image, so we omit this part of complexity in total counting. After linearizing state pi third, we can continue on partial linearization. First, we need to understand the effect of one constant in pi third. Each constant in the 1600-bit inner state can linearize two neighboring bits on its left. Like the example in the figure, the constant of pi third 31z can linearize chi third 11z and chi third 21z. Then, since the target bit in pi fourth comes from the sum of 11 bits in chi third, and among these bits only two are neighboring, it is easily known that the partial linearization of a single bit requires at least 10 constants, as shown in the figure. This is indeed the most efficient strategy for a single bit. Yet for multiple bits, this strategy is apparently inefficient because it wastes almost half of those linearized bits in chi third. Actually, those wasted bits can be utilized by simply adding one constant, as shown in the figure. By adding such a constant, we can draw another group of 11 linearized bits and finally reach a target in pi fourth. A restriction of this two-bit strategy is the locations of two targets are relatively fixed. For example, if the first bit is pi fourth 10z plus 44, the second bit must be pi fourth 20z plus 43. The numbers here are decided by the offset of row step. Based on this two-bit strategy, we finally adopt the freedom rule strategy that makes full use of those linear bits in chi third. With the chosen starting column, each term will let one column coincide with the column of the previous term, which means we can get two linear bits by adding only six constants. Yet the restrictions of this strategy becomes even stricter because the locations of all linearized bits are directly determined by the starting column. This table shows a comparison between old strategy and freedom real strategy. Within identically 194 degrees of freedom, the old strategy sets 10 times n constants for n linearized bits, practically 170 for 17, while the freedom real strategy sets 5 plus 6 times n constants for 2 times n linearized bits, practically 173 for 56. The efficiency gap is quite apparent. An advantage of old strategy is that the location of each linear bit can be arbitrarily chosen. Thus, the attackers can choose the site that linearly matches the digest with a gain of almost 2 to the power of 1. Yet, under freedom rule strategy, the location of each linear bit is relatively fixed. Thus, there is a gain loss since some bits may not linearly match the digest. The gain may be 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 0.5, or even no gain. These conclusions will be further argued in gain analysis part. Now we have explained the principle and effect of free and real strategy, which is the main technology we use in this paper. Yet our question is, if we spend 173 degrees of freedom in setting constants, how can we get a gain over 2 to the power of 21? Actually, we propose another technology named zero coefficient to reduce cost. By using this technology, we find and construct 11 linear dependent bit pairs so that those constants only cost 162 degrees of freedom. To explain the principle of zero coefficient, we first recall the two-round linear structure. We have constructed a linear root from chi zeros to pi third, and we are about to set several constants in pi third to perform partial linearization. One step backwards, each bit in pi third corresponds to the sum of 11 bits in chi second, in the form of two columns and one solitary bit. Although we paint chi second all yellow, Actually, some of the lengths may be constants or variables, depending on the input of step chi. Now, let's consider a special case of a bit pair in the same column of chi second. 
it is found that if the two solitary bits are both constant, then no matter what the two columns are, the corresponding bits in theta third become linear dependent because their components are just the same. This zero coefficient pair finally reaches pi third, and in this case, we can set two constants by spending only one degree of freedom. This is the key idea of the zero coefficient. Of course, these two constants cannot be set randomly. They must be equal or contrary according to the linear relation. As for the construction of zero coefficient pairs, we need to meet some restrictions to ensure the constant attribute of corresponding bits. And the constant attribute is decided by related bits of the Xbox input. To fix the input bits, we even need to trace back to the column sum in chi first. Notice that setting column sum will not cause degrees of freedom because column sums belong to the B tower of the equation system A times x equal to B. This table shows the details of all 11 zero coefficient B pairs on the starting column pi third 4 star z. From the table, we can see that these bit pairs can be constructed without contradiction. So far, we have finished the partial linearization part of our improved linear analysis for low capacitor charge. By spending 162 degrees of freedom, we can linearize 56 bits in pi fourth. Yet, because of the last long linear chi step, those bits in pi fourth may not linearly match the digits, so we still need to perform a gain analysis to calculate the expected gain of those linearized bits. In gain analysis part, we adopt a bit recovery model to select effect equations. Usually, the number of effect equations is larger than the number of degrees of freedom left, so it requires another process of freedom return to make up the lack of freedom. This table displays the details of all 56 linearized bits on the starting column pi third 4 star z. It is concluded that those bits are distributed in 38 rows, which can be divided into three classes according to the number of linearized bits they contain. Our bit recovery model also works differently in three classes. In rows containing one bit, the principle is quite simple. For a certain output, if one bit is identical in all possible inputs, it is regarded as a recovery bit and we can set an effective equation on it. The gain of such equation is 2 to the power of 1 because it compresses the whole space into half size with all qualified cases conserved. When the analysis object is Kachak 224, things become a bit complicated because an uncertain bit may cover 3 out of 4 cases, which brings the gain of only 2 to the power of 0.5, as shown in the example. Though it is also an effect equation, we had better give priority to those equations that can bring a gain of 2 to the power of 1, since the space for equation setting is limited. Then in rows containing 2 bits, it depends on the number of recovered bits. If there are 2 recovered bits, the gain is of course 2 to the power of 2. If there are 1 recovered bit and 1 uncertain bit, the gain may be 2 to the power of 1 or 2 to the power of 0.5. If two bits are both uncertain, we can still set effect equations on the sum of two bits, as shown in the examples. Similarly, for Kachak 224, the equation may only cover three out of four cases. Though we have multiple choices in this situation, no single equation can bring a gain over 2 to the power of 0.5. As for rows containing three bits, this situation is quite complicated. But fortunately, we only need to analyze a specific case for Kachak 256. In this case, pi force 40 z will never be recovered, so it is quite similar to the case of rows containing 2 bits. Though 3 bits are all uncertain, we can still set effect equations on the sum of 2 bits, as shown in the example. It is concluded that this kind of row can always bring a gain of 2 to the power of 2. We have explained how to set effect equations on linear space in pi force. The number of effect equations depends on the locations of linearized bits and the digest we are about to match. Yet in some good cases, the number of effect equations may exceed degrees of freedom. Besides making full use of freedom, we can also perform freedom return to fetch more space. The principle of freedom return is quite simple. Recall that in freedom rate strategy, each turn we add one column and one solitary constant to linearize two bits. Actually, the solitary constant corresponds to one of the two linearized bits. If we find no effect equations can be set on such kind of bits, we can return the freedom by deleting the equations of setting solitary constants. Since we linearize 56 bits in pi fourth, 28 of them may return freedom. Among these bits, 6 have been bound in zero coefficient pairs and cannot apply freedom return. This table summarizes the situations of freedom return for remaining 22 bits under starting column pi third 40 z. It is concluded that 7 degrees of freedom can be returned in average. Finally, 
By carefully calculating the probability of each combination, we get the NYC result as below. For 400 Kachuk 256, it is theoretically concluded that 34.5 effect equations can be set in average under starting column pi third 40z. Here, z shows a characteristic of rotational symmetry varying from 0 to 63. Yet, for a certain digest, there must be a best starting column that brings the greatest gain. We also run an experimental test and it is concluded that for about 74.5% of random digests, the total gain can reach 2 to the power of 38. For 4 and Kachuk 224, it is theoretically concluded that 38 effect equations can be set in average under starting column pi third 406, which is exactly the best starting column. Yet the total gain is 2 to the power of 32, since some of the equations cannot bring a gain of 2 to the power of 1. The experimental result shows that for about 61.3% of random digests, the total gain can reach 2 to the power of 32. For more details, such as distribution table, gain list, and calculating process, please refer to the original paper. So far, we have displayed all the contents we need to explain about our work, and now let us make a summary. In this paper, we provide improvement attacks on 4 round Kachak 224-256 through linear analysis. The crypto analysis consists of three parts as listed below. About linear structure, we inherit this part from LS19, which is a two-round structure with 194 degrees of freedom left. Our main improvements are reflected in partial linearization part. We adopt a freedom rule strategy where multiple bits can be linearized by some common constants. In addition, through the technology of zero coefficient, the cost of setting constants can be further decreased. In final gain analysis, by applying bit recovery and freedom return, it is concluded that the total gain of our improved primitive attacks can reach 2 to the power of 32 and 2 to the power of 38 respectively. That's all about our presentation. Thank you for listening.